Hey, hi, Ping. How are you? Hey, good afternoon, Ali. I'm good. Thank you. And you? Fine, fine. On this nice uh, uh, fall day, it's very nice outside here in the, the, the north shore of Montreal. We have nice temperature here. Yep. And I had to, to use the, the, the heat in my car today. So oh. winter is coming. Oh, no, not the winter tires and stuff. Yep. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Damn. I'll have to uh, take an appointment soon for that as well. So <laughs> we're going to wait uh, maybe a minute or two for some of our uh, guests to arrive. And uh, we'll be able to start this uh, webinar in a few moments. Uh, by the way, Ping, are you still working on what's new 2022? Yes, I am. I'm still uh, looking at the uh, well, the new features and getting prepared for our launch, uh, yeah. which is coming. Uh, so once we are done, we are done preparing it. Uh, you will, as guests who are watching us, uh, you will receive uh, an inv invitation to our launch for SARS 2022. Yeah. So stay tuned. Very excited about that as well. Always a yep. fantastic moment with my colleagues who pass. Yep, I'm always excited to when it comes to to the launch, and I. I cannot wait to, to show all these new features. We have so many this year. So uh, tell me, we see the, the screen well? Everyone sees uh, everything uh, fine? On my side, I, I can see your screen. OK, perfect. And the screen share is uh, good also? I think so. Right now, I can see your, your background. Great. And, uh, Great. So on the screen right now, it's going to be our head start for the uh, webinar. Uh, maybe a few seconds more, and then we'll start the webinar. All right. Okay, fantastic. I think we waited long enough, so we'll get right in the heat of the subject or the heart. All right. Whichever suits the best. So, hi, everybody. I'm Alain Fovo. I'm with uh, Chang Ping Lu, our uh, simulation electrical specialist and guru uh, of those uh, section of SolidWorks. Uh, we have the pleasure today to uh, have. Uh, a great webinar to show to you guys. It's going to be about how to work with different tools uh, inside the SolidWorks and inside a team in the company. So we've prepared a little something for you guys to uh, to check. Um, and we uh, had a, a little conception uh, that used a lot of different tools inside SolidWorks. So uh, as you can see, it's five teams. We're going to be talking about SOLIDWORKS. We're going to be talking about SOLIDWORKS routing. We're going to be talking about SOLIDWORKS electrical simulation. And of course, we will have time for some flow simulation as well. So without any wait, I'm going to go to the first topo, which is going to be SOLIDWORKS. And I'm going to show you guys how quickly I was able to uh, create that stepladder uh, inside the, the project. So quickly, we're going to go over to SOLIDWORKS. Ping, it's, it's all right. We see SOLIDWORKS fine. Yep, we can see your screen in SOLIDWORKS. I just jumped it. OK, all right, perfect. So we're right there. And I'm going to open up uh, my started ladder. It's going to be very easy. 
it's an empty file almost just a few sketches inside SolidWorks and that's it uh, I, I don't uh, think uh, we need to uh, show how to do a sketch inside SolidWorks we're a bunch of guys that know how to do things I'm just gonna quickly uh, show a trick or two inside um, Wellmits to be able to create the ladder so quickly what I'm gonna do is simply go and select uh, the uh, members I need to use on that ladder and I already uh, chose a 1.5 inches diameter uh, section and we're going to use that inside our weldment profiles so just selecting my sketch entities is going to transform them into weldments quickly I created that so my first section of the ladder is done I want to create the first step now so it's going to be this one and I'm going to keep it on the same uh, size of tube because uh, that's what I want to use so if I wanted another size no problem you saw the list I could go down and choose anything so quickly I'm going to mirror that so inside our toolbar S shortcut key we can manage that and put all the uh, options we need. So I'm going to just mirror that on a plane and it's going to be the right plane. And instead of choosing features and stuff like that, I'm going to select bodies. Since I'm using Wellman, I want to use bodies when I do those, uh, those options, when I create with SolidWorks. So I use them. I have the other side quickly I'm ready to go on and uh, try to do my repetition now so some little tricks sometimes that uh, we don't see and we don't use inside repetition if you do fine if you did not know about them I'm glad to uh, show them to you so um, again I use my S uh, shortcut key I'm gonna go into linear repetition I'm gonna choose the line inside my sketch as the direction for my repetition and instead of spaces and uh, uh, instances I'm going to use up to reference so this will ask me a point of reference and what's the distance between my steps so I'm going to put them at 10 inch apart again it's not going to be feature it's going to be bodies that I'm going to use all right and I'll show you why oh so I'll go down my ladder I'll use my point at the end of my sketch to be able to reference and create uh, oops I forgot to select the body sorry I come back here select my body you see them there if I need to skip instances I could skip instances as well in there no problem I can do that now let's see why I use buddies because if I go back one step I need to create the cut on that part so what I'll use is the trim extend this is the part that has to be modified and it's going to be modified by my two other buddies now I see the cut has been done on the part and it works fine. So when I create the pattern, since I took the body, the cut will be propagated to all the other parts. If I use just the um, feature, then the cut will not follow. So a little trick of uh, conception here. Next, I'm gonna use the uh, uh, arc for the uh, the cage for the ladder so same thing I'm going to use the same kind of uh, tubing to create it except that same thing I can come in my trim extend and modify that part as well as the two sides of the ladder to come and cut the part so it will fit nicely and then I'll use the extend 
bus inside the uh, weldment tools. I don't need to go into the features to do uh, and extend the, and create a body inside weldment. So I simply choose that and we go on. Perfect. Maybe I'd like to go in one direction about three quarter of an inch. I should put three quarter of an inch instead of 750 inches. Ah, better like that. And I'll go in the other direction. I know the length of my ladder, so I go down 240 inches and a half, just to be sure that it's gonna go, it's gonna go right down the bottom where I'm gonna put all the arcs. So very quickly, I can go back, same thing. Don't forget that bar, rollback bar, helps you create and go back in time, create something else, come back down, and your changes will follow. Oh, next, I do a repetition again for the arc. And I'm gonna use the temporary axis that the arc did create. And this time I'm gonna use the spacing. And they're gonna be like 40 inches in between each of them. I need only seven of them. And it's gonna be a body that I use again. Uh, oop, I'm in the wrong direction like this. And there we go. I take my rollback bar, done. See, I know I'm at the right place, no problem. Now, the next little trick is gonna be about circular repetition. There's a little trick that we can do inside circular repetition that is very nice. So what I'll do is use again the axis. It's gonna be 90 degrees. I'm gonna use the body again. I prefer using the bodies to create those, uh, those repetitions. And then when I wanna go in the other direction, I don't need to recalculate anything because this one is symmetric and I have a little tool to create the symmetry. As easy as that. It's done, my ladder is done. Next tip, next trick is to do the, the, the drawing of that and I'm ready to go to production. So very easily like this, just to show you guys the drawing of that ladder, some of the uh, nice tools we have in there. So bubbles, dimensioning, detailed view, welding symbols, don't forget, everything you need is there for you to put in and detail your stuff to go for the production. You can always, always use what you want inside the properties as you prefer in those tables. So no worries, you can ask any kind of properties that are available and show them in your tables very easily. So for me, first part of SolidWorks was modeling the uh, ladder, but later on, Ping is gonna have to uh, help me out because I don't know if I did that ladder strong enough. So I'm counting on you for that thing. We'll challenge that ladder that you have just designed and see if uh, how good it is. Fine, I'm sure you will. And I'm sure you will tell me if it's not strong enough. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. <laughs> so the next uh, topic uh, on this webinar for my part, will be showing a little um, routing that it's not all of us that know it's, it, it is existing inside our SolidWorks Premium and it's there. So we'll, we'll go and uh, check this out. There we go, SolidWorks, everybody sees it fine. Great, perfect. So once we're in uh, our um, com, uh, add-ins, okay? Don't forget, we need to have the routing add-in started. This way we'll be able to use its tools. 
And inside the design library of SolidWorks, we have a section for routing. So we already have some stuff in the routing. Of course, we can build our own stuff, help out with these things, but we do have some stuff in there for us. Um, I'm going to go inside electrical like this, and that's the folder I'm looking for, cable tree. Cable tree is in there, and you have already your length, elbows, cross, reducer, so no problem. Everything is, is there at least to start, and if you need personalized stuff, you can. There's a library manager for the routing that exists in there, and you can use it. So I save uh, us guys a little bit of time and I'll already put in one part helping me start my route. And this part has been uh, constrained to my model. So let's see how we can do that inside the SolidWorks. Very easily. Simply right click on the part and I can start a route. That route will go through the library I just show you guys to start it and it's going to create the first step of my route. I don't need to start a sketch, a 3D sketch, is it a 2D sketch, is it, what is it? Well, it's going to be a 3D sketch and it's already started inside SolidWorks. So I just need to go like this and visually, I don't need to add right away dimension and stuff. Visually, I can start my route and create it quickly. So simply with a sketch tool, I click on the dot and you see the axes are already there to help me create what I need inside SolidWorks. So simply go like that and you see it created my elbow automatically from the library. So as I go on, I can continue my route simply like that inside SolidWorks. And if I want, I can add some dimensions. Why? Because maybe I have a specific length of material. This is going to be in sheet metal, and I don't want to go over 144 inches long. So, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, two, like that. So right now, I have the length I need. I know the depth of my conception, so I know that the first two elements will be the same length. So I put them equal, and the extra one down is going to be my X dimension that I don't know. Okay? So I simply drag it down a bit. I seem to be about this, the good height for the the tray to reach the uh, cabinet so i'll finish the route click on it use the tab key to change the axis if i need so tab key will bring me back on the right axis i need to go if i move my model around like that you see the axis all already are taking the right path for me oh I'll simply use it, escape, and I don't need to, to bang my head or anything to connect to the cabinet. All I have to do is simply click on the surface of the side of the cabinet, select the, the hand point of my route, and say I want them to fit together. So now it's one against the other. It's going to be working very fine like that. So oh, I'm just going to check. Maybe my route is a little bit too low. And I'm going to just bring it up a bit. I could apply a uh, dimension to it, and it would work as well. No problem. I can add dimensions and stuff to secure my design. So oh, I'm going to finish it like this, just so we can see what is the result of that route. And you see? My cable tray is done. All my parts are done. Elbows and stuff. Now, maybe I need to go into production 
Maybe it's me who needs to send the details of that cable tray uh, for laser cutting and stuff like this. Don't worry about that. We can always create those parts inside sheet metal of SolidWorks. Even if it's not a sheet metal part, what I, I need to do is simply go in my sheet metal tools, use insert a band, select the flat surface, select the radius of the band, and accept it. And that's it. Now I have a part that can be unbent. And since it's unbent, I can create a DX set out of it. No problem. And ta-da, I have the result. Fantastic. In a few clicks, I was able to go from designing a route, having my parts, and being ready to send those parts for production. So all those tools are in there to help you guys work better and faster than uh, ever. So for me here, it's kind of uh, the end of the road for uh, this uh, presentation. Um, I think I see that we don't have any questions right now for the moment, so. Let me check uh, just to make sure, and we don't have any questions so far. Mm -hmm. Great, so uh, I guess it was uh, well uh, explained. I'm sorry for my accent, but I guess it's all right. So what I'll do is simply show you guys where we're going next, like this. So. We're going to be going with SOLIDWORKS Electrical with Ping. Ping, I'm going to give you back the... Uh... The floor. Yeah, the floor. Thanks. Was and we have fun. some floors here too. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> Annie. Uh, thank you very much, Annie. Uh, Annie, who just uh, presented the, the uh, mechanical design um, of this model. And I will bridge it to our electrical design. And um, let me just make sure that uh, we can see my screen for now. Yes. Just confirm. Okay, thank you very yes. much. Okay, here we go again. Go get them. All right, so you see i every time i watch you uh, do a presentation i think i always learn something new and i was like wow it's it's been just 23 minutes and you have already created a ladder a cable tray you have uh, created the um, manufacturing uh, drawings as well wow i've learned something today it's how fast it is solidworks uh, in, when it comes to mechanical design. So to bridge that gap, well, I'm speaking about a gap here. Uh, usually in, in, in industry, when we have multiple teams working together, especially a mechanical team and an electrical team, sometimes there are some issues connecting these two teams together. And that, that's like one of, the, one of the goals in this webinar is it, it is to work in synergy with different products, right? And because of um, of our SolidWorks solution, including SolidWorks Electrical, we'll be able to to collaborate uh, as a team. Uh, so let's have a look at this assembly again. All right. So just making sure that we can see my screen with SolidWorks. It's fine. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so the same model again, and we'll focus on the electrical cabinet that we have here. All right, so let's finish it. And uh, this is based on the work that we have on the electrical side, because we, we have an electrical engineer or designer working on the schemes. Here we go, we have, uh, we can see the, the, the scheme 04, which is uh, in progress right now. So we, I see what the electrical designer is doing, which could be myself, okay? So in this example, I will be the electrical designer, Alain will be the mechanical de designer, and we will work together. So in the main electrical closet, 
Okay, so now I come back to as if I was Ali, and I will complete uh, this uh, task to put all the parts, necessary parts, and create a routing. Okay, so from one command, uh, we can use the bidirectionality of SolidWorks Electrical and SolidWorks. So we can mm -hmm. bring the information together together here and get a routing. It's a little bit like the equivalent of getting a from to list for the wires. And in under a few seconds, I'm, I already have the wiring done. So this information will be added to the bum, all right? But not only that, I can see how, how the, the how it is uh, on the mechanical side here. Is the box, is the cabinet big enough? Should I add more space? Do I need to change the rails maybe? Do I need to add one more roll? Okay. So uh, we have our solid electrical solution that resides in, in the 3D environment that will help us make decisions here. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, placing components uh, inside the this cabinet is very easy as well. Simply just drag and drop. Yeah, we'll bring this component from this terminal strip and I can even insert multiple of them. So SOLIDWORKS will work uh, in collaboration with SOLIDWORKS Electrical to get to gather up all the information from the schematic and place everything inside SOLIDWORKS. So now I have a, an assembly that is updated. And if necessary, of course, uh, if I put it at the wrong place, I can simply just move it along very easily um, just by dragging it and it's already placed on the rail. Okay? Th this is because we have some interactions that are created thanks to SOLIDWORKS, which makes it very easy to manipulate uh, and make changes if necessary. Yeah, through the connection point inside the model, inside SOLIDWORKS. Yep. Great. All right, so now let's have a look at the uh, electrical designer side okay, where I will complete this schematic. Uh, I'm starting with some with a schematic that is uh, a little bit completed and I will I will just simply uh, start with by putting some wires. Okay? And it's very quick. I can insert multiple wires uh, in one command and it will automatically trim them uh, if necessary. Just mm -hmm. like in this example here when I draw the lines through the motor. Um, how about now I add some strips. Um, it's very simple, uh, just like in SOLIDWORKS. And uh, I can insert multiple of these terminals uh, like that in one command. And why not even faster? I can maybe use some macros. Simply just do a drag and drop like this. In fact, I have macros here stored in my library, so I can reuse this information. And um, I'm sorry about that. There, there was uh, there was a warning about my webcam. I think can, can you still hear me? Could, could you yeah, just confirm no me? Yeah, okay, I think there was uh, something slowing down. <laughs> it asked me if I wanted to deactivate something. Um, so uh, I was uh, talking about the macros and libraries. So it's like if we are working in, in, in an environment where we have a library and we can just reuse information over and over again in, in multiple projects. And storing information in, inside the, li the library is very easy. So just do a drag and drop into the, uh, the library and it's done. So you will be able to uh, put that macro in, in, in a different project or in a different scheme, for example, in this project. Okay. I work a lot with shortcut keys. So in my case here, the N key will uh, do the numbering of the wires. So all wires through my project will be numbered with a custom formula here, uh, depending on which wire it is. Um, how about other um, automatic uh, tools. Uh, we also have a, uh, the uh, in the terminal strips, 
the ability to generate drawings. Uh, so now I'm thinking about the uh, person who will uh, do the assembly. And I believe that having such a scheme or image, it will help this person a lot. So we have this uh, terminal strip or block. Uh, what is connected to it exactly? Which wires, uh, which cable, and to which component? In this case, which is the pump or the motor? Okay. It's very detailed. It's so easy to understand. Okay. This kind of thing can be exported as well. Uh, to help this person do the assembly um, and there are many more automation tools uh, inside SOLIDWORKS Electrical. Uh, I can even uh, publish or create reports or BUM. Okay? Uh, I can automate them so I can here I'm going to export all of them because I'm thinking about uh, a very critical um, step here which is to prepare uh, data to to actually purchase the materials okay. and from here uh, remember we uh, went into the uh, the treaty um, to to get the length of, on the wires so this allowed me to complete the bum so I get the length uh, the length values on all wires the origin the destination and all other necessary information uh, including all uh, information required for the parts to purchase and so on. Okay. Um, and here's one of my favorite tools when it comes to exportation. How about sending this uh, as a summary of the project to my boss, to my client, to a colleague? Okay. Uh, simply just give it a name and uh, I will be able to uh, do this exportation. So we'll create a PDF file. Here's the table of content or the list of the drawings, the drawings or the info, uh, including some diagrams uh, that contain some links as well. So it easily becomes a searching tool as well. So I can just go through this component TB1 uh, or the terminal strip or the circuit breaker or all other parts including the schemes and everything okay, so I can search through my project very quickly or it can be simply just um, it can just be a, uh, a summary of uh, what exactly is my project about okay, so we have tools like these uh, that are available and we also have a, an access well as a user you have an access to this electrical content portal uh, what exactly does it mean to you it's uh, it's about a few hundreds of, of millions of uh, manufacturing information available uh, so we can simply just download the information and integrate them into solidworks electrical and solidworks as well depending on are we working on, on the electrical side or or on the mechanical side so i will take schneider electric as an example here we have so many so simply just do a quick search so let's say i'm looking for some plc components or uh, symbols or footprints or simply just the manufacturer parts or even the 3d so I get a list of what exactly is included in this archive. Okay, so this avoids that you have to spend time in building the library. So it's already here. Okay, so you just download and integrate that into SolidWorks Electrical or SolidWorks. Wow. All right, so this completes uh, SolidWorks Electrical. Uh, which is our electrical solution for, for electrical design. Uh, but not only it allows you to, to do schemes, uh, schematics and, uh, and uh, line diagrams, but it also allows you to connect or to collaborate with the mechanical team or, the, or your mechanical engineers or designers and have 
uh, a work as uh, as working in synergy as uh, as a team of our our webinar here. All right. So now let's nice. test this ladder. Maybe the moment you've been waiting for, because we want to see how good it is uh, the, the the ladder that Ali created. Uh, in a very short time. So let's see it was worth it to, that, that he put this uh, this five, 10 minutes to create this ladder. Um, so we'll be talking about SolidWorks simulation. Okay, so this is our finite element analysis solution. So now back to our assembly. So yes, this is uh, the ladder that he just designed earlier. So I will open it. And we will launch a uh, finite analysis to test it. Uh, we'll do a virtual test, in other words. Uh, so it will it will help me reduce the uh, prototypes required, the number of prototypes required to to be able to verify or to optimize uh, a design. Let's so hope I don't support my weights. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll put your weight or someone else's weight with a factor of safety and see how good, uh, especially how it behaves uh, in terms of uh, structural analysis and see if we might have to, to add something else or uh, apply any modifications if necessary. Mm -hmm. so in other words, we will get the factor of safety. So here we go. Uh, we, all always have, we, all, we still have this ladder. Um, and it's it's just a step by step. Okay, you just follow uh, these uh, these steps. I will first add a fixture, and I will add it at the end of these rods here. And uh, this will help me support or hold the structure, and to make sure that I'm doing the things right. There are some examples, some images, even some animations that will help me uh, to my decision. Uh, in applying fixtures. So mm. it's very interactive and I always uh, get help everywhere, even at uh, during the, uh, the, uh, the steps uh, of, of creating the analysis. So the next step would be to apply a load because I have a load case here. My load case would be that someone, we have a worker who is uh, maybe on the ladder, maybe he's just uh, sitting somewhere uh, maybe he's uh, putting his weight on one of these members here. We have some examples as well. So even the uh, the guide here is interactive and it will direct me to the correct feature to, to use in my case here, which is a force or a torque. All right, so I will use a force applied on this circular member of uh, this wellman that Alain just created. And I will uh, apply a load downwards and let's say that we'll, we'll reverse the direction if necessary. Let's say that it's someone that has a weight of 250 pounds uh, more or less and maybe with with the factor of safety or, or not. Okay, So I, I will just use this as a number as a reference and let's test it. Okay? Very simple. The, the next step will, will be to run the analysis or the study in this case, and I will be able to confirm how good uh, this design is. Okay. It's very short here, as you can see. Uh, in about two minutes, I took Alain's model and I tested it and see how it behaves. All right. Uh, don't worry, that's not what's going to, that's not what, what it will do, all right? Uh, because I would go crazy, that's for sure. But we have a deformation scale of 667, that's why. So at the deformation scale of one, it would not move by that much. <laughs> the results will tell us more about it. Uh, so we can, we can feel comfortable um, by keeping going on and the material here will yield or it will break. So why not sure, Let, let's have a look at the factor of safety, 31. So we are so, so, so we are good, that's for sure. So good news, Annie, uh, this structure 
it will it will pass that's for sure <laughs> all right so the next step will be to see how much we can improve this structure or this design maybe we can apply some changes and mm -hmm. try to maybe lower down the factor of safety and save up on, on the cost somewhere uh, how about the other results maybe the stress results why not let's have a look at the stress results in megapascal here and we have 11.3 which is uh, much much less than the use stream okay? so in other words the the maximum stress value is much lower than, than than the yield strength of the material in other words it means that the weakest point on this structure okay and we can maybe hide it so it's somewhere here it is much smaller than the uh, the maximum value of uh, which is a property of the material that is allowed which explains the factor of safety of 31 that we that we got all right in other words um i will be able to confirm that i have just validated my structure or my design and it works okay that would be my conclusion and the next step would be to see how we can improve or even maybe maybe we can think about optimizing my my structure or my product okay and um, so yes what exactly is going to happen when when it comes to changes because we always do changes right uh, engineering changes uh, in, uh, in engineering engineering change orders are, are part of engineering and let's say that I, I, I'm asking Alain, hey Alain, could you make a change uh, to, to the diameter of this body here? Uh, sure, so he will make a change and uh, let, let's just make a quick change here. The only thing that is required after that is to update the model, okay, to take into that ECO or, or the change. And then my analysis will be updated as well automatically and the next step will be to simply rerun the analysis to update the results so i can get new results and it's done it's as simple as that this helps a lot when it comes to working uh, in synergy with our different products because all our solutions reside inside the same environment okay so now i get my new results and I'm ready to conclude again and apply uh, other changes if necessary. Uh, by the way, there are other ways to, to show the results, not just graphically, uh, but some people. I know that we all work, we all have different ways to, uh, to present the, the, the results. Some people prefer using graphics, some people prefer using tables or some diagrams, but of course tables um, we can show the, the results, uh, the shear, moment, torque, the axial forces, and stress, and so on. Okay, and can of course we can save them as uh, CSV text, uh, depending on what exactly is on the screen. When I'm done with the analysis, um, why not creating a report here again for the same reason? I would like to. To hand out this report to somebody my boss my client or someone and it's possible to add some notes if necessary and remove some sections that are not necessary for what i'm doing okay so let's just remove a few just as a test here so that that's the time of uh preparing a coffee or answering the phone maybe <laughs> which just rang somewhere and um, and it will be done okay usually it takes a few seconds a few minutes maybe depending on how big the analysis is and we should be ready to view the report which which is a summary it's a summary of what has been done in the analysis so i can take that and repeat uh, somewhere maybe a physical test or something 
So this is a real table of contents. It brings me up to this section. Okay. You see how it is easy it is. It's it's a real word report, including the results, including uh, everything that that was used to produce the the results, the fixtures, uh, the loads, etc. All right, and um, how about uh, we we have a different low case or a different case completely which is not to test the weight uh, of someone or or some or, or a body on on this ladder it could be maybe something that that that, that hits the ladder uh, it could be a vibration or something um, see here it's easy to simply just convert an already done analysis in this case a static analysis into the correct analysis. In my case here, it's a dynamic analysis, which will allow me to get some frequency results. Okay. So in this example, I will uh, look at the natural frequencies. Um, it could be, for example, uh, something working, uh, maybe a motor, maybe a pump. In fact, we have some pumps here. And um, I would like to avoid this structure near uh, a pump uh, to, to vibrate uh, at the same frequency as, as the pump, right? Or think about, think about a motor and the support body uh, of this motor. Okay? So I will be able to extract the, um, the natural frequencies. All right, I just converted the static analysis. I don't need to redo the, uh, the the next analysis uh, from scratch. Yeah, just get the next results. Okay, so now I get the frequency uh, results for each mode. It's also possible to animate these modes. Okay, if I would like to have a look, for example, at the uh, mode shape number two, which vibrates at 6.5 hertz. And that's what it would happen in real life. Uh, not exactly at this uh, scale again, but it will tend to do that. Okay. So these are some natural frequencies to avoid. So I have now, again, I have a tool or an analysis that will help me make choices or that will help me in my design steps and design something that will avoid having these natural frequencies, depending of, on, on what the situation or the conditions are. All right. Um, so this completes the, uh, the step for uh, the analysis on this ladder, uh, which, um, in which we use SOLIDWORKS simulation that helped me validate my design okay, or my colleagues design in this case here we are working in synergy as a team with different products the next step will be to have a look at flow simulation which is very similar to solid simulation okay. so this uh, this solution will help me uh, again here in making decisions um, and uh, to, to avoid, of course, doing some physical tests um, and see, for example, in this structure, am I missing some fans? Am I missing some important ventilations? Um, do I need to apply any changes to the design? Okay. So I will test it out and see if uh, it's maybe too hot. Is it, too, is it uncomfortable somewhere for a worker? Okay. Um, so let's have a look again in our assembly. So this is my uh, general assembly and we'll focus on uh, a, uh, in my case here, maybe a heat transfer analysis. All right, I already have one completed here. Uh, I will not redo the, I will not create the analysis here. I believe that you, uh, you from what we have just seen, uh, you know how easy it is 
to, to create an analysis. It's the same thing in, in flow simulation compared to solid rate simulation. There is a wizard or a guide that will help you go through uh, the steps, okay? it's a step-by-step -step guide. So we'll be able to build the analysis and in, even import information if necessary. Okay, so as in this example, if you have materials, why not import them from the 3D model to save up some time? Okay. There are a lot of automated features here. Okay. The goal is to save time, you know, so you don't need to, to spend more time bringing in some information already applied from the 3D model. Um, and then we build the analysis and we'll be able to to get results. Uh, it's very simple here. Um, we have some, some docs here where, where we have a system of ventilation and we have some lights. They, they generate heat power. We have a heat source or the, the equivalent of a, uh, a heat source produced uh, because of the electrical cabinet that is here. Uh, we have other components that generate heat power as well such as the motor, uh, well, both of them, the pumps, and other components as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's skip to the, uh, the results. And we'll be able to see how comfortable, how hot it is, how cold it is somewhere, um, and see if we need to apply any adjustments uh, into our design. All right, so quickly we can have a look at the results and see that this is maybe a critical region here where it may require some additional ventilation. All right. So uh, the results uh, speak that by, by themselves. And um, of course, we can look at the results of temperature, uh, but we can also look at the results of uh, how the fluid travels. All right. We can even animate the results and see what's going on inside uh, this environment. We have air traveling, and we may detect if there are any issues, if there are recirculation of the air. When you see, whenever you see a particle going back and forth, rotating around itself, so that could indicate some some eddies, which are usually some problems of uh, of, of of the air getting trapped. So. Um, so this uh, animation here speaks a lot. Well, this uh, this can uh, help us uh, figure out maybe my docs are not properly uh, positioned. And, and yep, so it could be an indicator. Okay. Of course, yeah. So okay. I can. Then the next step could be, hey Alain, could you uh, could you move the ventilation? Could you mm -hmm. add another fan somewhere? Uh, maybe it's heating up somewhere in this cabinet. Maybe we should add some some fans on the top of this cabinet to help cooling down uh, what's inside. Um, so yes, again here it's uh, it's a teamwork, right? So um, then we come back to uh, working in synergy, and we uh, uh, I have the uh, mechanical designer uh, help in the project and make changes then again the analysis will perform the analysis and see if everything is all right it's like mm -hmm. a cycle all right so that was the last part uh, which is uh, which was to test um, my environment and see how with, with a heat transfer analysis how how hot it was inside how comfortable it was for a worker staying inside uh, and this ends our presentation uh, on this uh, webinar on uh, working in synergy with, uh, with its different products. Um, so let's just recap. Um, so Alain and I presented 
uh, first the um, the mechanical uh, design with SolidWorks. Uh, so you could see how easy and and how quick it was to uh, design a, a cable tray, um, a ladder, and even creating some some manufacturing plans ready for the production in a few minutes. It's very quick. It's very very easy. Um, and then we uh, we saw how we could test this uh, this design and and validate if the ladder was good, if it required some changes. And, and that was with SOLRIS simulation. And SOLRIS electrical also helped in uh, providing uh, more information about the, uh, the cables or the wires or the harnesses, if I had any. And the routing uh, helped us Create, um, get the information and create these uh, wires in the 3D uh, thanks to the collaboration with Solris Electrical. So it's like if I connected the uh, work from the electrical designer to the work of the mechanical designer. Right? That to me is, is working in synergy with our different products. All about the collaboration. Uh, it was a very well demonstrated thing. Very good job. Yeah. Thank you very much, Anne. Same for you. Uh, it was uh, short and sweet. And uh, do we have any questions, uh, Anne? Uh, nope. I don't have any question that uh, came up. But like you see on the uh, have... last uh, slide, if you have any question, don't hesitate to uh, bring them up to us, and we'll we'll uh, make sure that you get answered uh, right, no problem. Yep, so uh, yeah, I think there, there's no, no more any questions. So uh, maybe we can wrap it up, Ali. And um, so uh, I would like to say thank you uh, for everyone who watched uh, this webinar and a big thank you to you, Ali, as well. Uh, I think we did a, a good teamwork here. Uh, to get this prepared, we we put a lot of time to to do this for you, and stay tuned. Uh, don't miss our next uh, events. Uh, have a look at our Solid Experts website, and uh, you will find some more information, uh, which will include our launch, as we do this every year. Solid 2022 is coming and we'll be more than happy to show you all new features from from our current or next release i should say of sonris 2022 great fantastic great see you guys all uh, next time thanks again Ping. see you next time yep thanks again bye-bye thank you everyone bye-bye